Hey guys, welcome to Six Kids in the Glue Gun. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Please consider doing so, no thumbs down. If you do subscribe, go ahead and hit that bell button so you're notified every single time that I upload. Thank you so much for stopping by. Enjoy the video. Okay, let's jump right into our first idea, this gorgeous beehive wreath that I made using mostly Dollar Tree items. I had this wreath form, this window, and this twine from the Dollar Tree, and I decided to go ahead and put everything together. So what I'm going to do is cover my entire wreath form in twine. I did not show myself doing this because there's really no right or wrong way to do it. Just get the whole thing covered in twine, careful of your fingers with the hot glue, which I used to just tack the ends down, and then your wreath form is covered. What I did not show was the rope I'm going to be using to cover this window frame. I actually end up using about three and a half since that's what I had on hand, but you probably want to have four um, rope bundles on hand. So I removed the little plaque that comes on the front of this window frame, and then I tacked down the end of my rope and I just began wrapping it all around this window frame. Once you get to the top, you just continue to wrap and just kind of follow the curve around. Ideally, you would need one more strip of rope to cover that little part of the beehive on the top, but I just made this work as that is all I had. Now you can notice that I do have two different thicknesses of rope, but again, that's all I had on hand and I made it work. I took the little plaque that was originally on the front of the beehive and I painted it with Pavement by Apple Barrel because I could not find my ink chalk paint. Then I just took some of these cute little bees that I purchased at Hobby Lobby, but I've seen that Dollar Tree does have some cute little bees in their spring section. Now I'm just going to glue my beehive onto my twine covered wheel by flipping it over and then just putting glue underneath each of the spokes. And when I get that done, I do reinforce with glue as well. If you feel the need to put a little thin piece of cardboard back there or something, you could. But but this worked just fine for me. I outlined my little entrance hole to the beehive with some of the twine that I used on the wheel just to tie everything together. Once that is done, I trim off any excess and I move to my bow. I found this beautiful bee ribbon at Sam's Club last year for a huge spool. I think I paid about five dollars. So I'm just forming my classic little X bow with two loops on either side. Then I take an extra length of ribbon to be my tails. I bunch it all together and tie it tightly with a piece of twine. I like to wrap it around and tie it in the back just to make sure that I get my bow as tight as possible because the tighter you get your bow, the better you can fluff it out. I then dovetail the ends of my bow by folding the tails in half and cutting a triangle upward. I am now going to tie that bow right on to the top of this wheel with another piece of twine, just tying it as tightly as possible. And then I can go ahead and re-fluff it after I trim off off that excess of twine there. I do go ahead and end up adding some greenery on either side of my bow because I thought this looked a little bit bare. But before I do that, I wanted to fluff out my ribbon a little bit more. So I just make a tiny little bow with one loop on either side and I'm gonna glue that right in the middle of my larger bow. I really think that this just elevates the bow and makes it look so much more fluffy. And once that is done, I will then add the greenery I just mentioned on either side of this bow. But you could also add some little yellow flowers if you wanted to that would be super cute I'm just going ahead and using these little eucalyptus pieces I had in my stash and here is what it looks like I think it is absolutely adorable it is perfect for a vignette it is perfect for a front door or a wall really anything that you like I just think it is so cute and I loved the way that the window piece came out and looks just like a beehive let me know what you think Okay guys, let's talk about today's challenge. It is hosted by CJ from CJ DIY, Christine from the DIY Craftaholic, and Jackie, Crafting in Mimi's World. These ladies are all super talented. I absolutely love being in challenges with them and participating with them. They are so fun and they make such amazing things. I'm going to have each one of them linked below as well as a playlist for this challenge so you can get tons of unbelievable... Inspiration. Okay, let's jump right back into the DIYs. 
So for the next one, I'm going to share with you this wooden wreath round. I absolutely love how it came out. Home is where my honey bee. And I'm going to take this wooden round from the Dollar Tree from the Crafter Square section and a couple of pieces of scrapbook paper. Now, last year during the springtime, I found the scrapbook pack. At Hobby Lobby, it had several pieces of scrapbook paper, several die cuts, and a bunch of really cute stickers, and I got it 50% off. It was around $3 or so, a very reasonable price, so keep your eye out for that again this year. So to begin, I'm going to take the piece of scrapbook paper that I like the most and want to show the most, and I'm going to place it on top of my wood round. Using my finger now, I'm going to go all the way around the edge of the wood round so I see where I need to cut. Once my circle is cut out, I am then going to cut into it so that I have two pieces and remove part of the width. This is what that should look like. I'm then going to use my glue stick to adhere those down and I'm going to take my other piece of scrapbook paper and cut out a strip to place across the middle again using that same glue stick. Here's one of the die cuts that came in the package from last year and I'm going to use hot glue to attach my die cut to the side of my sign. I'm going to create a simple little bow for the top corner. Well, it's not a corner because it's a circle, but you know what I mean, of this wreath round. And I'm just going to tie my little bow in the middle tightly. Here's what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and glue it down and then take care of those little tails, making them neat with a dovetail which again is just folding that little tail in half and cutting a triangle upward. Here's what it looks like after I use my Cricut to cut out the phrase home is where my honey bee. I found that in the images on Cricut Design Space, but you could use stickers, Dollar Tree, stickers, rub on transfers, or whatever you had on hand. So I hope that you enjoyed that one. And now I'm just going to show you a few bee DIYs that I had done last year and again posted recently. These are some of my favorites as well as today's. I think they're absolutely adorable. And again, I have a separate video for these. So if you'd be interested in watching these videos after you check out my video and our playlist, if you still want more inspiration, I will also have this video linked in my description box. Okay, guys, let's jump into our our next DIY, this is a super fun, easy one to make using Crafter Square items as well. We're going to be using one of Dollar Tree's new round signs with the beaded top and the paneling on the front. And then we're going to be using two of these beaded hearts left over from Valentine's Day. I am going to go ahead and flip my little round sign over and I'm going to place the two hearts tip to tip on top of the sign. I'm going to glue them down using generous amounts of hot glue, but you could use a stronger term adhesive if you wanted to, like an E6000 or a super glue this worked out okay for me flipping it back over i'm going to paint the edge of my sign with this yellow color i folk art and then i'm going to take this beautiful ribbon from hobby lobby you can get it on sale right now 40 percent off and i'm going to create a big beautiful bow by looping it over so that i have two loops on either side like so just folding it over this is what i call my x bow and once i get that done i'm going to cut off the excess on the other side flip it back over pinch it tightly in the middle once i get it pinched i'm going to use a piece of twine but you could also use a pipe cleaner or a zip tie whatever you have on hand you just want this cinched in the middle as tight as possible i'm not going to cut off the excess twine yet because i'm going to use this for another layer of ribbon which i'm going to create exactly the same way just a little bit smaller and tie it right on there tying tightly i'm going to flip this over to the back and tie again this bow is not going anywhere and then i'm just going to tie on my tails which is just another strip of ribbon that i bunch in the middle with that same piece of twine then you can go ahead and remove the excess of twine by just cutting it off and dovetail the tails of your ribbon which just means you're folding your ribbon in half and cutting a triangle upward then you can give your bow a nice fluffing by just inserting your fingers inside of those little loops and puffing it right out you'll have a gorgeous bow I just attach mine to the top side of my bee here and then you can go ahead and add some words 
the front of this. I printed out kind words are like honey. It was an image on Cricut Design Space, but again, if you don't have Cricut, no worries, my friend. Dollar Tree has beautiful stickers. You can cut out shapes on vinyl from Dollar Tree. You can use stamps or whatever you have on hand. You can print out something on your computer and trace on the back of it. So, so many options to get wording or images in the middle of this. And I just think this little abstract bee is so adorable. You could add a little head and antennas if you wanted to, but I liked mine just like this. So please let me know what you think about it down below in the comments and if you're going to recreate something like this or a variation of it. Okay guys, I'm going to show you how I made these adorable little cubes and also a nice little wooden box to hold them. So I'm going to take several calendars from Dollar Tree, a farmhouse calendar, a market fresh calendar, whatever calendars you like from Dollar Tree, you can just flip them all over and cut out the little preview images in the back. So I did this with several and here's what it looks like. It's just a little preview of what is in the calendar. And then these little dice come from Dollar Tree. They are four to a pack. Dollar Tree also has two pack dice that are larger, but I like these. I went ahead and painted top, bottom, and sides before I realized that that wasn't really necessary as these images are pretty much going to cover everything. So if you wanted to just paint the bottom, um, I would recommend painting the edges though as your edges may show a tiny bit. I decided to do the top and just leave the bottoms of mine painted. So all I did was apply some Mod Podge on my block and also to the back of my little calendar image and adhere it down. So I'm going to do this on five sides but again you could totally do this on six once you get your image on you can just then go ahead and flip your block over use a sharp craft knife or detail scissors to trim off any excess as you see my calendar images were a little tiny bit too big for these block sides so i just trimmed them down once my blocks are done i will be mod podging over them to seal and protect them but this craft is so easy so customizable and so Fun. If you're using several calendars, you could even do a block for each season, or you could do a block with just trucks. Um, whatever you like, you could do it as many as you wanted. The container that we are going to make, or the wooden box that we are going to make, would hold multiple of these blocks. I make six blocks, but I believe it would probably hold up to 12. So here is how easy this is. Now let's move into the box. I took two of these Dollar Tree wood trays and a wood plank that comes six to a pack from Dollar Tree. I'm going to bust out the bottom of one of the trays being very careful. I just use my X-Acto knife to break the seal and then I busted the bottom out. I glued that wooden edge that was from that tray on top of the other tray. I then used some Dollar Tree lightweight spackle to fill in any holes or crevices. I then took the Dollar Tree wooden plank that we were using that sticks to a pack and cut it in half. Once it is cut in half, you can put one half on either side covering up those cutouts on your wooden tray. Once that is done, I painted my entire tray, top, bottom, inside, everything with Waverly plaster chalk paint. I then took the two images from my favorite calendars. Now these are larger than your preview images. These are the one large image in the top left of your calendar. So you'll have the preview images and you'll have one large image in the back. And so I took these two large images and I'm going to Mod Podge one to either side of my box on opposite sides. So one I put more toward the right and then on the flip side I put the other image more toward the left. And then I'm going to take two lengths of rope. I'm going to make sure they're the same size and I am just going to glue them on either side of my box right around that wood plank that we placed. I'm going to use a generous amount of hot glue on the edge of that plank and just adhere that rope down. So I do this to both sides of course and those form our adorable little handles and they also kind of camouflage the ends, edges of that wooden plank and this just comes out 
out is so cute so adorable and it's perfect for holding our little blocks and again it would hold several more blocks than I actually created so once this is all done I am going to take a little brush and some antique wax and I'm just going to lightly brush the Waverly antique wax all over this box just to give it a beautiful distressed look. I even go over it that little calendar image but you don't have to distress this box if you don't want to. The box is also very customizable to whatever colors you would like and here we go an adorable little box for our cute little blocks. I hope you enjoyed that one and now I'm going to show you how I made this little tipsy pot. It's a miniature tipsy pot, perfect for a tall tier tray. I'm going to use two small clay pots from Dollar Tree. They come three to a pack and one that comes two to a pack. I'm going to paint the larger one with Waverly ink chalk paint and the two smaller ones with Waverly plaster chalk paint. After the two smaller ones are dry, I'm going to go over them with Waverly maize chalk paint. The reason I do them with plaster first is so I do not have to use so much of the Waverly maize. I'm using some washi tape to create stripes on one of my maize painted flower pots. My washi tape did not work very well because it wasn't very sticky. So after I went over this with my Waverly ink chalk paint, I did have quite a bit of bleeding. I just cleaned those lines up. But if your washi tape works better than mine, this should be just fine. If you do have any bleeding, just use a small detail brush to clean your lines up. Then I took my large black pot. I put some of this um, floral foam from Dollar Tree in and I used a small skewer stick that you can also purchase from Dollar Tree. Stuck it down in that foam. I positioned my striped pot right through that dowel rod and then used a little bit of hot glue to tack it where I wanted it. I then put the third pot through the dowel rod on top and used a little bit of glue between my two pots. Now I have this little cute pot hugger from the garden section of Dollar Tree and I'm attaching him to the very top pot and I'm using tiny dabs of hot glue on the bottom of the little ladder that he's standing on to attach it firmly to the very bottom pot so this is going to stay in place. Now I'm taking a big pick of eucalyptus that I purchased 50% off at Hobby Lobby and I'm taking pieces off of it to fill up that top pot, that middle pot, and also the bottom pot. I do mine quite full and wily and bushy, but you absolutely don't have to do that. I just thought that this was really adorable and I didn't even have to use floral foam in the two top pots. I just went ahead and popped that greenery right in there. And now I, I, I'm gonna use the second clay pot that was in that two pack and I'm gonna paint it with Waverly ink chalk paint. I'm gonna go around the brim with Waverly plaster chalk paint and then then Waverly Maze chalk paint. I was running out of my maze so I didn't want to do multiple layers. I'm then going to glue down a piece of twine and wrap it around the top of my flower pot like so. Glue the end down and trim off any excess. I'll then take a little twine bow and pop that on the front of this. So this is another very cute, very easy one as well. I absolutely love it. I had these stickers left from a scrapbooking pack that I purchased at Hot Hobby Lobby, 50% off. It was $2.99 and I got tons of goodies, including the sticker pack. And I love these stickers because the edges are clear. So I chose the stuck sticker, oh my goodness, sorry guys, and tucked it on the front. Then I put some floral foam and some more eucalyptus and put that on the inside. I chose this bee out of this little wood pile package from Hobby Lobby and I hot glued him to an extra little piece of dowel rod that I had and I just tucked him right there in the middle of all of that eucalyptus. An easy craft, but so cute. I really hope you enjoyed that one. And now I am going to show you another cute and easy one using some more of these stickers from that scrapbooking pack from Hobby Lobby. I found these adorable little glass containers from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to wrap some thin twine around the neck of that bottle and also around the bottom of that bottle about three or four times just gluing it down wrapping it around 
gluing where I want it to end and cutting off that excess. So I do both of the bottles in the same way. And then I just take that little pack of stickers. Again, I absolutely love these stickers because the outer edges are clear. So it looks so nice on glass. So for this one, I'm going to take this little beehive that says be yourself. I think it's so adorable. And I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that to the front. And then for the other one, I'll put a couple different ones on there. And here's what they look like. Again, just a cute little thing to pop into your vignette. I put some flowers and a bee on the other one. Really happy with how it came out. Okay, so for the next one, it is so quick and easy. Don't blink, you might miss it. But if you want a cute little accent piece or you don't have a lot of time to craft but still want something, grab a Dollar Tree tall pillar candle. This ribbon is from Dollar Tree as well. They had it out last year, but hopefully they have it out this year as well. I took a piece and went around the top and the bottom, just carrying it down with some hot glue. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to take these stickers that came in this kit from Hobby Lobby, and I love them because the edges of them are clear, so you can't even really tell once you put it on this glass candle. So I'm just choosing a couple that I think are really cute and adding it to this glass candle, and voila, a very cute, easy little design a little um extra piece extra decor piece for a vignette or a display here it is so that is it for me i really hope that you enjoyed today's video if you did enjoy it please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up take care and stay safe friends you can subscribe to my mom's channel and thank you for watching today's craft and stay safe